Voorhees. And am I the only one who needs a glick fix? No, we do! Damn straight! Ladies and gentlemen, Jiminy Glick! Fine, thank you. Oh my goodness, how embarrassing for an old jock like me. I used to be actually a champion pole vaulter in my old days. And one time I pole vaulted and I thought the pole was missing for three days. Then we found it through the help of the doctor. And look at this, look who I have to my left. The wonderful Adrian Van Voorhees in the Adrian Van Voorhees. <laughs> Look at all this band, not a green card with them. They and, only know, make out bits and pieces of what you're saying, but they, they, they like you very much. So they, they can't really understand. Not can any of them understand English? Anyone not in really a great deal. We can order in, uh, in some American restaurants without my help. <laughs> yes, like that Subway sandwich place. Aiden, do you know that place? I do. I know it well. Have you tried their meatball sandwich, by the way? It's the finest of all of their sandwiches. No. Yes, in fact, I was about to lace into one myself. Right now, if you don't mind. Oh, <laughs> oh f that high. Oh, holy f Oh, don't you just hate when you burn your mouth like that? Oh, I do it all the time. But rarely with food. <laughs> Anyways, what do I want to talk about? Oh, yes, I almost forgot. This morning, I had a near-death experience. Oh, hey. I was having my cuticles done by this wonky Hungarian with an attitude. And suddenly she starts having like this grand mal seizure. This thing. And she's shaking and the knife is slashing around like Vince Vaughn in that Psycho remake, which I didn't see and also I hear didn't work. But there was like a full four second period there where I actually thought I had nearly almost about to die. No. Yes. But it got me a thinking. When I die for real, I wonder how many memorials they will have for me. <laughs> Do you ever wonder about things like that? This is what I know. There'll be a big band and people will be wearing different hats and perhaps klaxons will be going and I hopefully will see a false face or two. And there'll be lots of booze and, and maybe those blackened shrimps that are so wonderful. Uh, speaking of blackened shrimps, I think Gary Coleman is booked for next week. Always a very charming little fellow. Oh, yes. Now, that he is, he's wonderful. And oh! Charming audience we have tonight. Uh, where's our Miss Gathercole? Is she here? Present and accountant. <laughs> Miss Gathercole, how are you, dear? I couldn't be filled with more glee. Really? Why is that? Because a little round cherub named Cupid has shot an arrow directly into my front bump. <laughs> what archer? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Miss Gathercole's in love. He's sitting directly to my left. Say hello to Craig. <laughs> I was expecting someone a little older. So, 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 Craig, can we assume you like your tires, shall we say, with a little less tread? Honey, this boy likes his tires completely bald. Don't listen to her, baby. She just wants what we got. Let me go, Craig. Let me go, I said. Oh, my God. Oh. This is more frightening than my near-death experience. Well, we have a wonderful show. Don't you dare go away. We'll be right back. Coming up, Jay Moore. Oh, spot on, sir. Spot on. Thank you. Thank you. Born to boogie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Spade. Which scene is mine, oh, Joey? Let's go right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. My goodness. Is Can David you imagine? David Spade uh, here? Do you know what? I am so sorry you're not David Spade, but. <laughs> and I now know, I don't know what to ask you. I'll just have to make it up, because these are all about David Spade. <laughs> Jay Marley, gentlemen. Thank you so much. I think you're wonderful. I, oh. 
So you were born in Verona, New Jersey, and I find that so interesting. Because, Why? Because my twins were both conceived in Verona, New Jersey. Twins? <laughs> yes. Ma Mason and... Uh... Matthew and Modine. That's three. That's, well, we don't speak about the third. He's in an institution. <laughs> and it's not that there's anything wrong with him, but it's just two or so many already. Right. Right. So you can understand how the wife felt. Are you really married, Jiminy? Yes, I am. I think that's fantastic. I've been married for 23 years to the wonderful Dixie. Dixie Levy. She was what we called back then, and you're not allowed to say it anymore. She was a Jewess. And, uh, and then we both converted to Buddhism. But in the old days, everyone said, what's, what's a Presbyterian boy like you dating a Jewess? And I'd say that, and I, you know, I'd, I'd look them right back, and these were my parents. And I'd look them, <laughs> and I'd look them right in the face, and I said, what do you want me to do? She's pregnant, you know. <laughs> Tell me about SNL, because you were on that. How many years were you on that, Jay Moore? I was on uh, Saturday Night Live for two years. And you did one, you, you did a wonderful Chris Walken character, Christopher yeah. Walken. Who wants to see a Chris Walken? <laughs> for the fans? Do it! Jiminy, it's fantastic to sit here next to you. <laughs> oh my God, that's wonderful. You did a film called Go. Yes, sir, I did. And you played, a, you played a, a lover of boys, and you were smooching with the boys in that, weren't you? Uh, I played a lover of a boy. So it's weird when you're just kind of typical guys like we are, and suddenly you're thrown into a situation where you have to smooch with a boy. Well, I kissed Jennifer Aniston, and I'd, I'd rather kiss a boy. Oh, my God. No! You didn't like Mrs. Brad Pitt. It's, uh, it was, What uh, is it that Jennifer did that you didn't like so much, Jay I Moore? I don't think she wanted me for the part, to be honest with you. I well, do... that goes without saying, but what made you so mad? <laughs> you know, it's amazing to me. Uh, I'm here to promote nothing. I, know. I got off... I know you're gonna make some smart-ass remarks. Oh, don't go there. Let me finish. Well, you know what? <laughs> go ahead. I, I, um... <laughs> None of this was in my, my pre-interview. Do you, do you resent tabloid journalism? What do you think of tabloid journalism? Uh, I haven't really been, uh, subject to it because... But if you were, would you hate it? As long as they spell my name right, I don't mind. You love publicity! Sure, you're, a, you're an actor through and through. No, I'm a comic, I guess, more than an you're actor. You're a comic I'm, I'm more a... than an actor. <laughs> I do, I, that's how I got into acting. You're it's a, well, no, no one told me that. <laughs> I knew you were the gay boy in Go. I just, I have a feeling you're disappointed that I'm not David Spade, and I... No, I'm, it's not, it's, look, I think disappointed is the wrong word. <laughs> Upset that none of this is usable, sure. <laughs> um, a sense that, isn't it a shame we've all assembled and they're not rolling tape? Absolutely. <laughs> but disappointed, no, and I'm I think... I'm being insulted and berated, and yet I'm giving you, like, these, uh, these little Hollywood gems. But let me see, you're not I'm being... I'm a fan of the show, and you thought I was David Spade, and, you know, he's... No, no, first of all, this is what I I'm think. I'm actually five foot eleven, and, you know, it's... This is what I think, Jay Moore, and I... This and is I, just I, going... I'm, this is bad. This no, is just, I know. But uh, this is what I think. <laughs> I'm not the reason you're on cable, you know, it's... <laughs> I, I'm not... We tried to get on CBS, and they wouldn't have it. We tried ABC, we tried PBS, we tried NBC. Well, maybe we tried BBC, we tried CBC, we tried CTV. <laughs> Telemundo? Telemundo wouldn't have us. They said I didn't dance fast enough and I wouldn't wear fluffy hats. <laughs> this is the lowest of the low. And you feel compelled. What makes it? And you know why. Because Jennifer Aniston was right, you're mean, Jay Moore. Although I think you're very, very good. And you, and you, and you share a birthday with Keith Moon. And I think that you Do are... I really? Yes, you do. August 23rd? Uh-uh. And <laughs> I want to say that you are absolutely the most staggering young presence. You stand. You're totally unique within your own. And that's what gives you... Oh, we're out of time, thank God. Jay Marling, gentlemen! <laughs>
from one of my favorite segments of Primetime Glick, where I get to show home movies. And this one's a particular favorite of mine because it features me and my four boys, Morgan, Mason, Matthew, and Modine, shooting hoops. <laughs> and I love to shoot hoops. Cause that Glick man. Home movies. Oh my God, Adrian, I was so not finished. I want rules. And I don't want people to be mean and gruesome and low. That's what split up the Beatles, because Yoko Ono came in and demanded attention. Hey, Ma. Lana Turner. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Mom. Does no one want to hear about Lana Turner? I do. Yeah. After the game. OK, let's write hey. that. Hey, you're naughty. You're naughty. <laughs> Jiminy, you raised our concentration. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, and I broke that little one, that, the shorter one. No one wants to see you play, it's boring. Hey! Stop it! Get away! Ah, Jimmy! Jimmy! Jimmy, Jiminy, don't! Oh! Dad! Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. uh, he cheated. Ah. Well, come on, Mel! Yeah. Go in! Hello, Hello Morgan! Oh. <laughs> My son, I tell you whatever your name is. Oh. Pick him up! I thought I was having chest palpitations, just that guacamole. <laughs> Too early. Pick him up now! <laughs> 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 I'm up! Dixie, I'm up! <laughs> oh my goodness, Grace. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> Hello! What? Honey, please. Hi! How are you, Reverend? Good to... <laughs> <laughs> No, we're Buddhists, but thanks all the same. I'm not revealing what you're... Don't Don't hit. show them your equator. Don't hit. I'm not hitting you. Don't hit. I'm watching the... Ooh, your cat seems to want to release the hostages, and they're to be kept in <laughs> captivity. <laughs> Doesn't he have great moves? Who? The Morgan? Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't notice. I'm too much of a guy. Jimmy's home. Before we uh, continue, I must clear the air because I am extremely, extremely upset. Let's put it this way. I am sitting on enough steam here to poach a whole school of suck-eyed salmon. <laughs> because before I could finish introducing my home movie, you, Adrian Van Voorhees, cut me off. What happened was... Time! Now, I know exactly what you're going to say. But if I could only... And you have no idea the volume of emails I get begging me to muzzle you. What happened was... Very... Please, I am going to ask you one more time. This is unacceptable. I have something to say. And I have a right to say it to you. Now, granted, you are popular with the ladies over 15 for some bizarre, strange reason, young Latino males. <laughs> but the rest of the world has a huge problem with your yapper constantly going... <laughs> I just want to tell you, I was told to cut you off by Ramon. <laughs> Ramon? <laughs> I know. You cut me off. Oh, you rascal. Well, that's different. Anyways, the other team took our cameras to the home of the often misunderstood. Uh, <laughs> goodness. Whose glasses are these? <laughs> They're Drew Carey's. What am I doing with Drew Carey's glasses in my pocket? <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> now I can't read who the next guest is. <laughs> but you know what? I'm sure they'll be just super. <laughs> Why don't you take a look for me? <laughs> now we go out and about with Jiminy Glick. I'm sitting here with one of the great stars of all time, and a lovely girl, and a girl who stands for something, and who represents America, the kind of America that I am happy to live in. And her name happens to be Rosie O'Donnell. I think she's wonderful. <laughs> Rosie, how are you? I, I'm good, thank Aren't you. Aren't you excited to be part of what daytime television should be and can be, and you proved it. Isn't that true, Rosie O'Donnell? 
Donna? Well, uh, Jiminy, in a lot of ways, I feel it's just, you know, I didn't really reinvent the wheel. I just sort of, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, stole their show and put it on nowadays. And the girl powdering me said that your show's going to end. How come? I feel as though I've done everything I wanted to do artistically. You've been on two years. Six. I want to see some of those early dates. I bet you had lots of fun people on. We had a lot of very funny people, and it's been a great run. It's been six years, and I... Six years? I made a lot of money. What will you do with all that money, Rosie? What will you do? I'm going to go with my children down to Miami and just be a Little League mom in a minivan and maybe paint or write a book or something. Yeah, that's about eight... $15,000. What about the $400 million? What else? What happens to that? Just stash it away? Pretty much. I just keep it and, you know, make people ask for loans. But you've always been a very generous woman, and people admire you about this. People like, like Oprah's cheap, isn't she? She doesn't really spend much money. She's hoarded a lot until the pressure. She felt pressure to give more money. Then she gave money. The people say Ro Oprah is cheap, but Rosie's generous. Everyone's, I saw it in a bumper sticker. Honk if you said Oprah's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> now, who wouldn't you have? Who, who, oh, this is a good question. I, I like when I stumble on a good question. Yes. <laughs> who wouldn't you have on the show? Patty Duke. She's been on. She's been on. Yes. She scares me a little bit. She does. She, she does. Why is that? You know what it is? I think twins scare me. Twins, they see, yeah. twins seem like they're from another planet. But you know, she's twins. not really a twin. She just played a twin on no. it. No. Yes. Who, how do you know such things? Because from Merv Griffin watching that all yeah, the time? Yeah. They played identical cousins. Remember, they weren't even twins. I saw her once uh, in a car wash and I just ran. <laughs> I was scared. Oh, Patty Duke! And I ran away. And then I caught my breath. I'd run about 12 feet. And I thought, what scared me so? I must see someone about that. And have you? No, no rush. No. No. Are you tired of talking about celebrities? Do you get bored with that? Sometimes I do, actually. So you won't be talking to any of these people anymore? Yeah, I won't yeah. have to do that anymore. You won't have to <laughs> hide the boredom. <laughs> it's wonderful. Well, you're doing a good job now, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I loved you. I've loved you in so much of what you've done. Exit to Eden. Oh. With the wonderful James Dean. Yeah. Was, was he in that? No, no. What am I thinking of, dear? Uh, uh, East of Eden. Except that Eden was a, a wonderful film and you were nude in it. I, I was as it. close to naked as I've ever been in a movie, but I actually had stuff on. And you had, and, the, and, and your bosom was exposed? No, 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 no. My bosom was not. It was covered. Was that? By leather. You were buck naked. I was no. told you were buck naked. No, I have on a, an S&M outfit. I was an undercover cop. <laughs> S&M, I love, I love that. You were, you were in an S&M thing? Yes, I was. What I, were you doing in that? I was actually in, I was an undercover cop. Undercover, and, 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 and I was trying to infiltrate a, a sex island where there was a murder. And, and so I had to dress up in the sexual. You were an ex s and &M. Yeah, I was. What, what is S&M? <laughs> it's. It's where, you know, you tie up the person during sex and hurt them. Oh, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you worked with Elizabeth Taylor. Yes. In the Flintstone. That's right. She knew she was there and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She did. She did. Sure she did. Yeah. And the whole cast and crew, they all got dressed up that day, and everybody was very excited. Until the acting started. <laughs> all right, and well, this has been absolutely, absolutely fun. I can't believe that you are leaving the show. Mm. Because I don't want you to go, Rosie. No, well, there's an opening, Jiminy, that could be the Jiminy Glick show. No, it's good an opportunity as that would be for me. Yeah. Oh, it's fine for you! Okay. Okay. Storming off to Miami with your $450 billion and all your boats. I assume you have boats. I have some boats. But we're going to miss you, Rosie. Well, you know, Because we think you. you're wonderful. Thank and you. you've represented so much joy to so many people. I want to say thank you to Rosie O'Donnell. This has been absolutely a hoot. Come back again. I and will. Oh, did I hit your bad hand? Yeah, you did. About four times <laughs> That's now. Okay. Well, what are you going to do? Rosie O'Donnell, isn't she fun? That's it. There you go. Off thank you go. You. Primetime Glick. We'll be back after this. This is nice, you guys. Very relaxing. And you know what? It's very nice to see you guys have patched up your differences finally. And I apologize for snapping at Adrian. As you should have. And I did. Because you were wrong. And I apologize, okay. didn't I? Okay, that's good. I've had fun. Uh, not in the traditional sense of the word fun, meaning to have a good time. And you were rude. I was, I was rude? No, no, not you. Your little friend on the end there. 
And I apologize. As you should have. All right, all right. I take it back. Oh. You are a persnickety old hen, and I'd like to, I'd like to kick you right in your slap. All right, Would let's you? guys, let's Would be you? cool. May I remind let's... you that I've had some martial arts training. Look, sucker! Don't let me go! Postal service on your rump! Oh, sucker! Look who's the big homeboy now, aren't we, oh, homeboy? Okay, easy, like easy, easy, fellas. Okay, let's not. It's not, let's it's not, not all right, you know what? Freeze. Someone's penis is on my leg. Make that two. <laughs> Oh, I feel violated. Oh, how do you think you got in the business? Oh.